예, 우리 하나님의 말씀 예, 같이 보시겠습니다. 하나님 말씀. Let's read the scriptures together. Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 to chapter 2 verse 4. Let's do a response reading. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things and through whom He made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful word. After He had provided purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty in heaven. So He became as much superior to the angels as the name He has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father? Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, He makes his angels winds, his servants flames of fire. But about the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever, and righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says in the beginning, O Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment they will be changed. But you remain the same, and your years will never end. To which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For if the message spoken by angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard Him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to His will. Amen. Now let's all pray together. Pray that the overseer will be given great inspiration and that we can all understand the will of God in this time. Let's all cry out Jesus once and pray together. God our Father. We thank you for allowing us to have this direct uh, Berea lecture time, which we haven't had for a long time. Let us not be those who only hear God's word, but let us all be chosen by God. We pray for all the families to be the families that have been chosen by God. We pray for all our souls 
that we can all be the chosen souls of God who have all been called by God and who become the great servants of God. The reason we uh, do this prayer lectures is not just for our ears to hear, but we want to truly raise 10,000 uh, leaders. Let there truly be leaders born through this. May they not uh, let the words drift away and only call on the Lord with their lips, but their hearts far away from the Lord. Lord, help all these souls from today, every week. Uh, we uh, we will be uh, doing this uh, very original lectures. Uh, help them to listen carefully. Those who have already finished studying Berea Academy, but may they listen carefully now. Uh, for those who are hearing this for the first time, although it's difficult, help them to understand and believe so that they can all be the servants used by God. When this servant uh, preaches, this servant is very weak physically, but he will give all his might. And until the day you permit, help him to continuously do your work. There are souls who want to be here but who uh, are not ready or who are not able to come. We pray that they will be able to come next week and continuously attend to listen. In Jesus' name, Amen. What we studied in Berea Academy is not what we're going to learn about today because they are basics, they are fundamental, they are fundamental to this, the Berea teachings. I've written many books as well. The reason I've written them is... Uh, I have written them so that I can explain what is what I couldn't explain further. It's like uh, the leaves and the flowers to the tree. I've added that in, through the books. So before I used to run like a master's class, I ran that for about a month or two, but I actually uh, stopped that. Uh, there was a Berea master's class, and then what that was for was to raise teachers of this. But the reason I stopped teaching that class was because I heard people saying, oh, Berea is not everything. I heard that. I heard these people saying that. So I realized, oh, these people don't even know what Berea is about. So what is the use of giving them something so good as this? So that's why I stopped teaching them. Even Jesus said, though I teach you, you are not able to handle what I am telling you right now. The, the people asked him, why don't you tell us the mysteries of heaven? Well, even though you hear, you do not understand and you cannot handle what I tell you. Later on, when the Holy Spirit comes, He will, the Holy Spirit will teach you to keep what I've told you. He doesn't speak of His own accord, but He will remind you of what I told you. He will teach you of what I've told you because He is the Spirit of Truth. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will let you know what I told you. He will remind you of what I told you and he'll, he'll help you to understand what I told you. If you don't understand what that means, then you don't actually have the right to receive it. So the Bible says, He who has an, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit says to the churches. It says in Revelation, Revelation chapters 2 and 3 to the seven churches, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit says to the churches. If you have the ear to hear what the Holy Spirit says, then hear. So you have to hear. If you are unable to hear, then you cannot understand. So even on the Lord's Day, I said this. On the Lord's Day, we read the scriptures, we read uh, the Bible. You don't need to interpret the Bible verse that we read in any way. We don't interpret the Bible scriptures, the scripture verse. As it is, we just believe. We just believe what it says as it is. And then we have the sermon outline. The sermon outline, all the concepts that are found in the passage that we read, how does that uh, encompass the whole Bible? That's what the sermon outline is about. When you, So those who understood the Bible verse, when they read the sermon outline, they can understand. 
what the whole Bible is saying about the passage you read. For example, although the film is very small, when the light shines through, it actually gets projected on such a large screen. It gets magnified or it gets projected 100 times bigger. So it's the same thing. And then when I preach the sermon, when it comes to the sermon, it's giving inspiration to uh, to that. It's giving inspiration, making the tree to bear leaves and fruits and uh, flowers. Once or twice a year, I keep mentioning this for over so many decades, but people just let it pass away. And so what's happening today is happening. Look at me right now. Look how peaceful I am. Do you know why I am at peace? I know Jesus and Jesus is in me. But why are people so disorderly? Why are they so lost? It's because they have not grasped this. People heard what Jesus said. They followed uh, Jesus and they they saw what he did. They were his disciples. There were hundreds of them. He had many disciples at one time. And when Jesus talked about good things and about honoring your parents and about loving your brothers, they all understood his words. They all understood those things. And Jesus said, listen to me and learn from me. And they seemed to understand what he was saying. But then... And then he said... Your forefathers ate manna that uh, ate manna in the desert, and so they understood this because they know about the history of their nation. But then Jesus said, "I am not like the bread that Moses gave them. I am the bread that comes out from heaven." And they were astonished. When did he ever bring bread from heaven? They were amazed. They were astonished, and they, their eyes were wide open. But then he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And then they said, what is he talking about? What on earth is he talking about? And then he says, you must eat my flesh to have eternal life. You must drink my blood to have life. And when they heard this, it sounded so extreme. And it sounded scary in one, in a sense. How can a how can a person give his own flesh to be eaten? How can he give his own blood? And they said, "What is he saying?" And they couldn't understand what he was talking about. That's why the disciples, many of them, left Jesus. They left him and they never followed Jesus again. They never returned to Jesus again. So for many years they had followed Jesus and they had listened to his words. They all agreed to what he said and they saw what Jesus did and they commended what he did and they gave glory to the Lord. Nevertheless, when it got further, further, and he said, I am the bread that came, came down from heaven. Just, he, they first thought, is this a special bread like the manna that they ate in the But then he said, I am the flesh, I am the bread. You must eat my flesh and drink my blood. And so they were absolutely shocked. And they all left Jesus. And they never returned. So then Jesus said, the spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. You are only thinking about your flesh, what you can eat, what you can drink, and how to be rich in your flesh. But Jesus said, no, my words are spirit and they are life. Now, the, to, the, here, to the 12 disciples that remain, Jesus says, are you going to leave me too? And then Peter answered, the words of eternal life are with you. To whom shall we go?
So he saw the words and Jesus as being equal. You have the words of eternal life. In other words, you are here, the Lord, you are here. You have the words of eternal life. To whom? To where else shall we go? And they followed the Lord to the end. And just as the Lord Jesus died, they also became martyrs for the Lord. You know this very well. So in the beginning you heard the word. And thank you. Although you hear his word, you hear that word, if you don't understand it, even if you hear the word, if you don't understand, the word that comes out from heaven, the spiritual words are the words of God. The word of man, words of man is man's word, but God's words are, because God is spirit, they are spiritual words. People think, oh, I don't understand what he's saying, what that word is. Well, God's word is spiritual because he is spirit. So even Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. The Word of God is Spirit. So with the ears that can understand human words, we can't actually hear the Word of God. Can my ears hear spiritual words? Can I, can I hear the Spirit of God? So we need to pray a lot for that to happen. So when we became Christians, people think about becoming a Christian as something useless. They just discard it so easily. For us to become a Christian, how much effort was put into that? When we were in this world, we didn't know about God. We didn't know God. We were filled with sin. It was not only the actual sin that we committed, our impersonal sins, but there was the sin that was passed down from our ancestor Adam. We all had the sin that leads to death. We were doomed to death, yet we didn't know about this. But when we heard this news, we realized, and we went through such a bit of repentance with tears, and we repented. We sought God's forgiveness. And we were baptized. And we were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is the name Jesus. And then we prayed even more. And then we received the Holy Spirit. And we also tasted the gifts of the Holy Spirit. This is something that the people of this world cannot even imagine about. People might think, did this person become enlightened or did he just go mad? That's the kind of experience we have had. So if you consider Christianity as a religion, it's not mysticism, but it's the religion of experience. Everybody experiences it. In other words, you have a testimony. If you, A religion of experience means it's a religion of testimonies. In other words, not just a philosophical religion. It's a religion of testimonies. You have a proof. That's what Christianity is about. That's what our Christian faith is. If you look at religions, actually religions, look at Buddhism. It seems very pious and godly, but for them, they don't have a god. They just uh, imagine a god in their abstract in abstract notion, but Buddhism actually doesn't have any gods. They don't believe in a god. They are atheists. What is that then? Their religion is philosophy. It's a philosophy. But it, within philosophy, there is no experience. Philosophy is about your own cultivation. It's about your own uh, training. But Christianity is not a religion of cultivation. It's not about moral cultivation. 
Christianity, it's about experience. You have to have a testimony. With your testimonies, you cannot become a Christian. So what did Jesus say? When you receive the Holy Spirit, you'll receive power. Then you'll be my witnesses. Without a testimony, we cannot actually become a witness of Jesus Christ. So without having received a testimony, can we be a witness? There are people who say they have become a witness, but then they fall away, they become corrupt, and they do something else, and they deny Jesus, they deny the church, they are against the church, they are against the pastor. That's what happens. There are these strange pastors in our church, and you can see these people do not know the will of God. They didn't learn this properly. 100% they didn't learn this properly. They just heard what the outside was about, but they don't actually know what the inside, the core is about. That's why I realized I have to teach this quickly because I'm so old before I, before I actually die. You know, until the moment I faint and I say, oh, I have no energy to say anything, I'm going to teach this. I have no time. So from the first day, we have to listen with, 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 with our mind alert. Let's all say it together, Christian, Christianity is not a religion or philosophy. Your minds, all your thinking is philosophical, but we are not a religion that thinks. Do you understand? We imagine and we can think. That's all our own philosophy. But our faith is not a religion of our thought. Answer me knowing what you're saying. We have to experience. We need to have a testimony. We have to secure a testimony. So we are witnesses. Witnesses cannot be witnesses without a testimony. You have to have a testimony. So what does the Bible say? If you believe and are baptized, you will be saved in Mark chapter Mark chapter 16. And the Bible says, These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will speak in new tongues. In other words, your, your spirit is able to commune with God. And you will cast out demons in my name. Didn't the Bible say that the demons tremble because of our faith? They will tremble in fear. The demons will tremble in fear. So we can cast out demons in Jesus' name. And when we lay hands on the sick, they will be healed. They will get well. And then what did it say? When the Lord finished speaking, He was taken up to heaven and He, was, he sat down at the right hand of God. Then He was at work with them. So even after He went up to heaven, it's not that he was doing something else he said you will be my witnesses and according to that word after he went up to heaven the Lord was at work with them and he confirmed the word with signs and wonders so it's because people are trying to be witnesses with their testimonies that they are all frauds. They are all frauds. You need to have a testimony. Christian faith must have a testimony. We are not about a philosophy. People who study can study philosophy. There, there is something called Christian philosophy. You are able to imagine. You are able to think. However, this is all in the mind. This is what your mind can do until you die. This is just the way that you can use your brains, but that's not your faith. What what comes up in your mind is not your faith. What you think in your mind is not faith. What you imagine is not your faith. We have never seen God. Because we have never seen God, people all imagine their own gods. They imagine Him as red, yellow, blue. If I'm talking, I, if I it can say this in terms of colors, if I say in terms of shapes, they think of Him, they think of God as a triangle or a square or a circle. But He is not a God that can be accepted with those concepts, with those imaginations. God is this. God says, I am God. And He showed, He revealed the image of His being. God Himself showed who He is. Even if we are spiritually blind, if you're standing in front of a mirror, you can see yourself. 
you are the you are created in the likeness of God's image so you are similar to God in your image so to, to that point God revealed his real self God revealed the image of his being the exact representation of his being so the so God's image that we cannot see with our eyes, He revealed to us as He is. That's Jesus, and so we have to believe that. So the Bible says the world does not believe because people of this world do not believe because they are bounded by the spirits, the gods of this age. Their minds are blinded, and so they are not able to believe in the gospel. But Jesus is the image of God's being. He says in Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four. Still, they cannot believe. For what reason? The reason they still cannot believe is because they have determined to perish. They are unable to believe because they have determined not to believe. I studied 10 years in the Presbyterian Seminary, but I didn't become a Presbyterian pastor. And I told you the reason why so many times. Because I do not accept their theory of predestination. But one thing I do agree, one thing I cannot deny is Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. Even though people try to believe, the reason they cannot believe is because they have determined not to believe. It's because they have determined not to believe. Even if they were elders, when the moment they die, if they say, oh, I, I just lived a useless life and they die, then... They will perish. They might have been an elder in the church and they might have worked hard and they might have given a lot of offering, but they don't know. They don't know where they are going when they die. So they will die without knowing. So just because you're an elder, you might be praying up here and then you might call yourself a elder, but those who are determined to perish will be, will perish in the end. And to that, I couldn't say anything. To that, I couldn't rip up because I've actually seen people perish that way. So what I say is, I, because it's already in the Bible, I can't say anything against that. I can't say anything about that. Look at your children. They were so dedicated and they, they were so zealous when they were in, in high school, but then when they come back from military service, they've they have lost their way. So you don't know how they will turn out. So although there are people in the church, we don't know who who will actually perish. Even out of the 12 disciples of Jesus, Jesus said, Jesus actually said to them, didn't I choose you? Didn't I choose you 12? They, the 12 were all chosen, but one is a devil. Jesus said, Jesus actually said that, but what is the devil? So although Judas Iscariot was part of the 12, before Jesus shed his blood on the cross and let his disciples drink, the, drink his blood, Judas Iscariot left Jesus and in the final moment, in front of the courtyard of uh, Pilate, he threw the 30 silver coins and he said, I have sold innocent blood. And he cried and cried and he... Uh, if, he if he had actually done that, if he had repented before the Lord, um, before the cross, and then he, would, he followed Jesus to the tomb, then probably he would have been more zealous than Peter. But he couldn't do that. Why? Because he was determined. There are so many things that I can say against the theory of predestination, but there are these few things that I just cannot uh, interpret otherwise. Now I have children myself. Yeah. 
And I'm praying so hard so that not one of them will be lost. I pray a lot for them. And I pray that they would know, they would become witnesses of God like me. And then they say that. As if uh, people say that, you know, do, do I want am I, do you want your children to go against God? No. We, we all want to be chosen by God. Once we have been chosen, we should be glorified to the end. But although Judas Iscariot kissed the Lord saying, Rabbi, and kissed him, he went and betrayed his teacher. So there are people with two faces. They are dealing two sides. I was very naive all my life, really. And I trust people really easily. I trust people. I trust all of them. I just trust them. Some people tell me, oh, don't believe in that person. Don't trust that person. But I say, why? What's wrong? But with, with this incident, I can't trust this person or that person. I don't know who the spy is. Some person said to me, even between husband and wife, even between husband and wife, they're in this situation. Is this right? Especially those who are working with me, all the workers who are working with me, they come to they come to you say rabbi and they kiss but then they go back and deal at the back with some providing some false information it's a scary world so people don't know how they are perishing how they are getting lost christian faith is not a bad philosophy Judas Iscariot met Jesus and accepted Jesus, but that was different to how the 11 disciples accepted Jesus. The 11 disciples believed that Jesus is the Son of God and believed that He was Christ sent by God. They believed Him. They believed Him. They just believed it. They, they believed it as it is. And because of what they believed, they became martyrs. Jesus is not a Nazareth, Nazarene. Well, he was, he is a Nazarene, but he is the Son of God. And he is the Christ sent by God to save us. They believed that. But Judas Iscariot thought, oh, his words are very philosophical. So he considered Jesus as a philosopher. So what, what they cannot understand so recently, a uh, there, there was a Buddhist monk that said, "Mountain is a mountain, and a river is a river." And there, are, people are trying so hard to interpret what that means. He just said, "The mountain is a mountain, and a river is a river." And so people are saying, "Oh, there must be some meaning behind what he said." What does it mean by a mountain is a mountain, and a river is a river? And they they think very hard. There are a lot of scholars trying so hard to interpret what it means. Philosophy gives birth to more philosophy. It just it's about constant thinking, endless thinking. But that's not what our faith is about. That's for people who are very clever, who are smart, intelligent. For us, it's okay even if we're dumb. As long as your hearts are open. Just open your heart and just believe it as it is. For children, if the mom says, go have it, go eat this, they just open their mouths and eat it. They don't say, mom, what is that? How many calories does that have? What is, what is that? They just accept whatever their mom gives them. They don't ask about it. They don't question it. In the same way, 
We just eat it as it is given. We just accept it as it is given. But Judas Iscariot saw Jesus, considered Jesus as a philosopher. But he was with Jesus for three years and he saw that Jesus was a great man. But the Jews were misunderstanding him. The high priests were jealous of him. And so... He, he thought, as a disciple, I need to protect Jesus. I need to protect him. And by that, by all, I, I need to let his status, his identity be proven uh, in, the, in the courts. That's what he thought. That's why he went and... So that's why he met the scribes and the uh, high priests and sold, sold Jesus, betrayed Jesus. Because when you sell him, becomes a slave. A slave means a sinner. And let them treat Jesus however they want. So if Jesus is taken to the Roman courts, so... Judas Iscariot trusted in the Roman courts because the Roman courts was considered to be the most just uh, court system, uh, legal system. And so that's what he wanted Jesus to be taken to. And Jesus was taken to the court. Judas Iscariot knew that Jesus was innocent from the beginning, even when he betrayed Jesus, because that's the way that he wanted to defend his teacher. That's the way that he wanted to protect Jesus. But when he saw that Jesus was condemned a sinner, he said, No, I have sold innocent blood. But no matter how much he insisted, there was no one listening to him. Because Jesus was sentenced to death, he was crucified and he had to be punished. So even if it was a disciple of Jesus, did he really believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Well, but just because Jesus' words sounded deep and profound and philosophical, is that why he followed Jesus? Even if, you, if people don't understand, people think, oh, there must be something philosophical about that. And so they think they attach a great meaning to it. So even when you write a poetry, are you going to use philosophical words? Do you have philosophical meaning or do you have inspiration? When you read the poetry, you can actually distinguish two. In the same way, when people come into the church, as they are leading their faith life, they just consider God as a philosophical figure. They just imagine their own God. So my thought is different to another person's thought. My idea is different to another person's idea. So when African people draw the face of Jesus, they draw him black because their skin is dark. They also draw Jesus as being dark skin. But if you draw, if you get European people, uh, if you get European people to draw Jesus' face, they they draw Jesus with a big nose because. That's what they always see. So what they imagine, what people imagine, if seven, if there are 7 billion people, 7 billion people all imagine differently. But God is not a God that is imagined differently. Our Christian faith is not like that. There is only one God. He is a same. There is no you and me difference. In the whole world, there is, a, there is one and the same God that we believe. There is only one, the same image of Him whom we believe. Me, you, we all believe in the same God with the one image. It's not God that we imagine. It's not... If we have a different God in our imagination, that's not Christian faith. There is just one God that we all believe in. So the one in heaven. Heaven means high, means lofty, high above. God, our Father in heaven. And Jesus Christ, whom He sent, who is our God. Our Father in heaven, let's say together. Our Father in heaven. Jesus Christ, our God, sent to us. So, 
our God is Jesus. Jesus is our God. So we have we know God, we have seen God. We have seen the image of God. We have seen the exact representation of God's being. We have seen the real image of God. We have seen Him. We have seen His works. We have heard His voice. So Christian faith is very clear, very sure. Our uh, saints were singing hard here and it was very nice. And I hope you will continuously uh, do that every Friday. But on the one hand, I am a bit concerned. Though they sing so hard, though they sing, do not be mistaken that your singing means that you are serving God. Well, you have to possess a testimony. You have to secure a testimony. Let's all say it together. Oh, my soul, have a testimony of my faith. Oh, my soul, have a testimony of my faith. Oh, my soul, have a testimony of my faith. Oh, my soul, have a testimony of my faith. Without testimony, you don't know when you'll, you will fall over. You don't know when you will become corrupt. So the Bible says, the blood, the water, and the Holy Spirit testifies. Whoever, whoever has this testimony has life. Whoever does not have this testimony doesn't have life. He said in First John chapter 5, he clearly said that. Let's all say it together. I have the testimony of the water, the blood, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. I have a testimony. Therefore, I have life. We clearly... So this testimony is talking about an experience. If I have a testimony, it means I have an experience. I have that experience. So for our, our church members, through prayer movement... See, these experiences cannot exist outside the Bible. Why? Because God never works outside the Bible. Even the law is the word of God. But when there was the law, the Holy Spirit didn't come. It is only when Jesus came and Jesus spoke that the Holy Spirit came according to the words of Jesus. The Holy Spirit never came according to the law of Moses. Although the word the Holy Spirit or the word Spirit of God appears in the Old Testament, it, that's just talking about God. And it was also referring to the angels. The Holy Spirit never came to people according to the words of Moses. So Jesus said, He who believes in me will have streams of living water flowing from within him. And he was referring to the Holy Spirit that the believers would later receive. But Jesus had not yet been resurrected and he had not yet been glorified. And so the Holy Spirit had not been given to them. But after Jesus ascended to heaven, he said to his disciples, wait. And he said, be baptized. And when the Holy Spirit comes, you'll receive power. And from then on, you will have the experience of power. And so then you'll be my witnesses. That's from that moment on, you'll be my witnesses. So those who have experience are witnesses. Even in the court, if a witness stands and they just say, oh, I think this is a case. That's not a true witness. I saw yeah, at this place at what time and what circumstances. See, right now, there are people who are mocking, insulting me, but they don't have any proof. They have actually emptily... For three months, they have threatened me empty, but without any real proofs. They have to have proof. Without testimony, without evidence of your faith, you cannot be a witness of Jesus. We have to have proof. We have to have a testimony. 10,000 leaders refer to leaders who have testimonies. Are you a true leader? Are you a true teacher? Do you really know God? So through this special barrier lecture, 
through the traditional burial, through this uh, special burial lecture, understand this very carefully, very, very carefully. So before when we started Burial Academy, we only accepted those who had read the Bible twice or more to register to study. And they had to actually take notes in the lecture. And back then, they they studied really hard, but most of them have actually gone old or they've they've uh, died. I don't know where they are, but see, for pastors, because they have read the Bible so many times and they've studied theology, they pretend as if they know. If they are zealous to listen as if they don't know, they think that they're going to be uh, looked down upon by the saints. And so they pretend as if, they sit there, pretend as if they know everything. So they are only coated on the outside, but they don't really have anything inside. There are a lot of people who've just received a coating of Berea on the outside. They don't really know what it is. So don't just coat yourself. Fully experience it. I bless you all in Jesus' name. Those who have experienced this, there should be 10,000 of those experienced it. And those who, have, those who have experienced it cannot stop talking about it. They cannot resist People say, have you heard? Have you heard? Oh, I, you know, so and so and so and so and so and so. Oh, just, just, you just know, okay? Don't tell anybody else. I'm only telling you. Even though they say, oh, yeah, I'm not going to tell anyone. But soon they go away and then they say, oh, did you know? And then they tell somebody else. Even men, they are, their lips are so light. Now, when they receive the Holy Spirit, they can become witnesses of Jesus. But on the uh, but on the contrary, they are they are now quick to spread rumors. Instead, instantly, a person I've never seen people able to bring a person down so quickly. But let us truly have spiritual experiences, divine experiences. So please listen carefully. When you're building a house. You have to actually get a, approval from the council. Now, you have to show them the blueprint and they check the whole blueprint and then they, if they find it okay, then they will give the sign of approval. And you have to build according to that blueprint. If you... Get, if there is an error of even 10 centimeters, then that's actually breaking the law. When we built the Christian World Mission Center, it's the, the area is huge. It's actually very big. Now, there is only an error of one centimeter. So with the computer, they actually uh, designed it. Even when they're cutting metal, when they're uh, drilling holes in the metal, it is done through a computer. And when you, when you put them all together, they fit in perfectly. When the screw goes in, it goes in tight. But if if there is an error of a centimeter, do you think it can actually go in? So even that huge building, in the whole building, there is only an error of one centimeter. So isn't that amazing? And so according to the blueprint, they, des they design and cut all the materials and so all the things fit together perfectly and it stands perfect. In the Bible it says, upon your holy faith, build yourself up. It's not according to however you want that you build. The temple is a model of Jesus Christ. So Jesus said, destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. I will raise it in three days. So after he died on the cross and he resurrected in three days, 
He was speaking about the body that he, that will die and resurrect three days later. Now, we are also building up that temple because it says you are the temple of God. You are the temple of Christ. Now, when you're building that temple, can you build it without any blueprint? If you go beyond or if you go less than the actual build blueprint, you can't build it. That's breaking the law. So even the huge building, the world, the Christian, which is which is 142 meters long, the uh, there is only area of one centimeter. You can see how amazing that is. There cannot be any uh, bigger error than that. In the same way, when we we have to build ourselves up according to the word of God. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church. What is this rock? This rock is the faith. Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. This is the confession. This is the rock. This is the rock. This is our faith. Jesus is the Son of God and the Christ sent by God, my Savior. And believing this, upon this faith, upon this rock, I will build my church, Jesus said. We are building ourselves up upon our faith. We are building up our spirit. There should not be any errors in that building. That's how we can stand properly. As I said to you before, even though you don't have the brains to, do, to study or to do philosophy, it's fine. See, primary school students, when you're studying in the primary school, you're not studying philosophy. You just learn about what you see. Uh, you just take in what you see. But when you go into middle school and high school, you start to think philosophically. And then when you go to university, the whole studies itself it's not like primary school, but it's actually philosophical. It's all like philosophical. University studies is, college studies is all philosophical. So when you go to university and you finish, when you graduate, you actually get, you are actually graduating a study of philosophy. But it's fine even if you don't have that philosophical brain. If you have such a philosophical brain, what do you become? You'll become like Judas Iscariot. You might become an auntie of Judas Iscariot or brother of Judas Iscariot or something like that. So don't don't think about that. Just just be simple. Eat this bread. If he gives you bread, then just take it. I went to my friend's house a while ago and I was very tired and I was sleeping. And he was like, he was waking me up and said, eat this. But I was so sleepy. Then he put something, he put something into my mouth. And I, want, I was wondering what it was. And he put a rice cake in my mouth. But as I was chewing, I woke up. So if Jesus said, I am the bread that came down from heaven, then just believe that he is the bread that came down from heaven. Now, when he says, I am the bread that came down from heaven, people thought it was some bread that they always ate, like white toast bread or something. But then he said, I eat my flesh. And then they couldn't understand. They, they left him. But just believe what he says. So we read Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to chapter 2, verse 4. This is very important. This is very foundational in studying the Bible. What did it say? So in the past, God spoke to our forefathers. So this is even the people before the time of Moses. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. Hanani me 
So in various ways, God spoke to the people that, and we call that natural revelation. So in various ways, for example, we eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Let me let me ask. Raise your hand if you've eaten chicken before. Raise your hand if you've eaten chicken. None of you. Are you that poor? When you eat chicken, did you did you eat it alive? Let me uh, answer me. So it was like a, it's a, it's a it's a model of Jesus Christ. Do you do you eat rice cooked or do you eat it raw? You eat it all cooked. It's dead. So it's all a model. It's all a type of Jesus. His his flesh so all the creations all the creations i'm talking about natural revelation you've all eaten beef before right do you eat beef do you eat a cow alive or do you actually kill it before you eat it you have to kill the animal before you can eat it it's all it's all a parable of Jesus Christ in various ways, as it says. So all nature, all creations existed. They were all parables about Jesus Christ. They were all symbolizing Jesus Christ. The sun set and the sun rises in the morning. Again, it's actually a parable of death and resurrection. It's a constant, even uh, a spring and autumn, it's all about death and resurrection, death and resurrection. So in various ways, at many times and in various ways, it was prophesied to us. Do you understand? Do you understand that? Raise your hand if you've eaten a pig alive. Raise your hand if you've killed a pig and eaten it. Say Amen. You've all killed, you all eat it dead, right? It has to die for us to eat it. So, in the past, in these last days, God revealed this. So, this was all this natural revelation. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son. So, He was speaking about His Son. So, all of this was speaking about His Son. And His Son is the heir of all things who will. He is the heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. Through him, God made the universe, God made all things. So God created all things with his Son. The Son, so the Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being sustaining all things by his powerful word after he had provided purification for sins he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven he is now in heaven so he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs so until jesus came the name jehovah the angel of the Lord represented God and was shown to the world. God cannot be seen. God cannot be seen. But God showed his existence to the world. By the angel, the Jehovah, but the angel is not someone that died on the cross. So God that Moses met was an angel, it says in the Bible. That's what Stephen was teaching the Jews about that, and that for that he was stoned to death. That's what Stephen was teaching them. He said that the God you believe in, the God that your forefathers met, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, was actually an angel. 
He says in Acts chapter 7 verse 35 onwards, now you could not keep the law that was passed on to you by the angel and that's why they stoned him to death. Now that angel came in the name Jehovah. So the people of the Old Testament knew the name of God as Jehovah only. However, so he became as much superior to the angels as a name he has inherited is superior to theirs. So the name Jesus is... You see, in the name Jehovah, we cannot receive eternal life, but through the name Jesus, we have eternal life. And the name Jesus is not the name of an angel. It's not the name of a human being. It's the name of God the Father. And it's a name that the Father gave His Son. We already know this, but let's check the Bible again. Let's go to John 17, 11 and 12. Let's read it loudly. If you've all found it. John chapter 17, 11 to 12. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except as one doomed to destruction, so that scripture would be fulfilled. So it was originally the Father's name, but the Father's name, what does it say in verse 6? I have come to the world in your name, Father, and I have made them made that name known to the world. The name you gave me, Father, I give them also, that they may be one with us. And I will explain about being one later on, but he said, let them be one as we are one. So that scriptures would be so that the scripture would be fulfilled. So the name of the son is a, is a name superior than that of the angels. That's what he received as an inheritance. So the name Jesus is the name of the Father. The name of the Son. In John chapter 14, verse 26, he says that the Holy Spirit will come in my name and he will teach you, remind you of everything I've told you. The Holy Spirit comes in Jesus' name. So when we were baptized, we baptized the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We say the Father, the, the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But in the Bible, those who gave baptism never said, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In, in the book of Acts, there are t more than 10 times when the disciples gave baptism, and they never said, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we baptize you. But instead, they said, in the name of Jesus, I baptize you. In the name of Jesus, I baptize you. Why? Because the name Jesus is whose name? The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those who have studied Berea, wherever you go in the world, I have been to different places, different countries, and I've heard people saying, Oh, through Berea, I came to know the name of God. Oh, in Songhai Church, I came to know the name of God. They find it amazing. In Songhai Church, nobody would say, Oh, what is the name of God? I didn't know the name of God. The name Jesus is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, he received that name as an inheritance. The Son received this name as an inheritance. So, we're going to learn about it later on. But the name of God is the first righteousness. The first righteousness. What is the righteousness of God? I'm not talking about the will of God. I'm talking about the righteousness. God considers this as righteousness. And what is this righteousness? It's the name of God. The name of God. Mm -hmm. 
So, no matter how great the angels are, they are those who just attend him until Jesus comes. When did the angel ever become a judge? So, the angels are sent to help us who are going to inherit salvation. In chapter 2, it says, so we must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For if the message spoken by angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation which was first announced by the Lord was confirmed to us by those who heard Him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to His will. What is it we have to do? We have to. We have learned this very carefully. So from, from next week we're going to speak deeper. Today, in order for me to build a house, in order to, for me to build myself up, you have to be sure. You have to have an experience. You have to have a clear experience. You have to have an experience. Understand that. And when you're praying, let's pray. God, let me have the testimony. God, let me have a great experience. Let me have a great experience. What does the Bible say in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4? Uh, chapter 12, verse 7. The manifestations of the Holy Spirit are given for our good so that we can those experiences are for our benefit in chapter 12 verse 3 it says without the Holy Spirit nobody can confess Jesus as Lord nobody can say that Jesus is nobody can be a witness of Jesus without them so we need to have experience no matter what people say you know, even if people say oh they all talk about uh, tongues and whatever they, they might criticize but we just have to follow what the Bible says we just have to follow what the Bible says so let's just let's pray together God, let my soul be full of experiences. Let's pray together. Pray earnestly. Pray earnestly so that you have an experience. Pray earnestly. if we're, if we're going to listen to this special prayer lecture, we need to have experiences. You need to receive great power. For people who are old, we don't have that much power, that energy to pray. For your sweat to become drops of blood, to pray. You can't pray that hard at that old age. When you are young, I, I thank you, those who come up here and sing. When you are young, just like Shimon received power when he was young and he continued working until now, have experiences while you are young, for then you can become a witness. Don't just do it and then stop, do it and stop. Don't just do it and stop, do it and stop. Don't be changeable, but have great experiences. Let's sing here, 515. <laughs>
여러분이 정말 아 주의 종이 되겠구나. If you really want to become a servant of the Lord, if you want to fulfill the Lord's will, if you want the Lord to consider you at His right hand, to be at His right hand, then in this opportunity. Have experiences in your faith. Have the faith of experience. I bless you all in Jesus' name. We are not philosophers. We have to experience. We have to become witnesses. And for that, be determined. And it's like having a blueprint in front of you and getting approval. God, I want to be a witness of you, Lord. Help me. Jesus said, if you ask for anything in my name, the Father will be glorified and I will do it. He, Jesus promised this. So with all of our might, promise the Lord tonight and truly to become the man of the Lord, determine yourself and pray together.